Uh, Hi, how are you? I, I, yeah, I saw, I saw the, uh, no, it's okay, I'll, I'll, I, you, you t- we'll talk about it in, in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, it says that you are now live. If yes, everybody is I here. hope. I hope we are. Well, we're not dead. Okay. So we've been talking about communication. Really, we've been talking about how to fix our speech when it comes to a relationship with our spouse. And we said that the origin of the thinking about this whole topic is the idea that uh, speech requires what we call the five aspects of loving kindness that come out of knowledge. So that's a big mouthful. And really what it means to say, we'll have some more things to say about the theory today and then more about the practice is that when we speak there is a proclivity like it's a, it's a natural instinct to speak without thinking right so without thinking really because that's the that's the natural form of speech. It's like what he writes in the Tanya, that nobody knows how to speak. Nobody knows how to actually form the words. They just sort of happen. So because it's such a natural flow, it tends to tap into our innate nature, into our subconscious, not necessarily into our consciousness. And so to speak with intention means to focus on what we're going to say, to think about it. So that's why these things, even though we're talking about things that should be simple, right, talking about words of love, words of criticism in the right way, words of praise, and the two that we'll do today, words of, he calls them here, uh, coordination or something like that. And uh, Rev Ginsburg... And words of um, of gratitude. So even though these are simple categories, there's nothing very uh, surprising about them. The real uh, challenge is to practice it enough and to think about it enough until it gets to the point where you can actually think before you speak. You can actually think, uh, what category am I in now? In a certain sense. You don't have to become so, you know cerebral that you can't say anything but but the point is that the more the more you think about it the more the mind plays a role in what you're about to say um this is, used to be this thing that uh, before you say anything just count to 10 or count to 100 depending on the person backwards in greek whatever you want <laughs> so that yiddish if that's the language that challenges you why? To, to stop stop the natural flow and to start thinking about what I'm about to say. And, and, and it's not easy. So really, that's why we do these classes. And in a sense, that's really what happens um, when you take each, each part of the couple separately and you talk to them separately. A lot of marital counseling is about just communication. A lot of things are left unsaid because... You've been together for so many years, or so few years, depending on the situation, um, and either you think that nothing can change, and so you sort of assume that you know what's going on in the other uh, person's mind, or you don't know yet what's going on, you haven't really ever heard it, and you never got to the place where you could communicate well enough that you could share uh, deep feelings and explain really what you feel, because you got too upset about what happened or what was said. So you never really got a chance to hear the other side out, or even the other side doesn't know how to bring out, doesn't, is not aware completely of what drives them. So a lot of marital counseling has to be done with, the, with both, both members of the couple, but a lot of it is also done separately because in the end there's also um, 
things that each person more needs. Successful speaking to them together or separately? Both. Both. You can do both. You can talk about, let's talk about a certain interaction that caused you uh, grief. And let's see, what category does this fall under? Was this uh, you asking for, <laughs> that's a famous joke, the husband comes home and he says, quick, get me something to drink before it starts. <laughs> Have you heard this one? <laughs> and the wife is like, sure, but what's going to start? <laughs> says, no, no, quick, go get me something to drink before it starts. She says, oh, you sure, just tell me what, what's going to start. And <laughs> he tries again, and then she blows up. She says, what do you mean, what's going to start? What's going to happen? You've got to tell me what's going to happen. You know, every day you come home, and all you do is you demand this, da, 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 da. too late, it started. <laughs> so that's like, <laughs> okay. those are words of what we're going to call coordination. And... Um, <laughs> And you have to know um, what, uh, what to do with these things, right? That's, that's the classic example of, of, of not being able to communicate properly when it comes to asking somebody for something. How to ask? How do you ask? And the, the worst part of being married is that you assume that you're close. That's the worst part of being married because there's some uh, ring on somebody's finger and there's something in the, in the, in the closet or on the wall. So that, in theory, makes you close. <laughs> but uh, to become close, like everybody knows, that, that requires a lot of, a lot of uh, time and effort. And sometimes you never get to that closeness that really allows each side to understand the other side. And, you don't, and, and, and like I said, sometimes the person himself doesn't know how to fully... Uh, express and get in touch with what they're feeling, so then it just becomes uh, you know uh, 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 two two deaf people talking to each other, and then the facilitator is somebody who's supposed to try to you know sort of calm things down and try to get each side to ex express what is going on during these interactions. Why do you feel that way? Why do you feel that? The way that you did, why did you respond the way that you did, and so on. Okay, but apart from that, there's the learning side that we always stress, which just needs time. You need to learn these things. So when we talk about all this theory, um, really what, what we expect to do is to try a, and develop it. So today I'm going to try to develop something a little bit, you know, might get people angry a little. But okay, we'll see. We'll see how you handle it. Um, <laughs> it started. <laughs> yeah, brace yourselves. <laughs> okay. When did he start using this term, words of coordination? I don't think I don't. Know, I'm not sure if he even calls it coordination. Oh. I think I just made that up. You Let's made see. that up. He 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 he. Um, he. I I imagine this is uh, whoever translated this from the Hebrew. But you'll see that in Hebrew the word is coordination. Here they used control and direction, which is more... It's uh, a combination of control and right. direction. I, I like to think of it more as coordination than control and direction. Yeah. Um, and the, the word in Hebrew is nitzuach, nitzuach ala melacha, which you could understand as control. It's a conducting, like a conductor conducts the orchestra. But there are two ways of thinking about it. You can think about it as... Um, forcing everybody to fall in line, or you can understand that there's coordination to be done when there's so many people playing at the same time. So, but here you only have two. Well, <laughs> yeah, more than two, we'll see. But it's kind of beautiful, isn't it? Because it creates music. For sure. Right. Well, of course, of course. Of course. Yeah, of course. That's, the whole, that's the whole point. But you said there were five categories. Right, so we said, uh, we said words of loving kindness, words yeah. of criticism. Oh. And we said loving kindness is the main thing. And really, today we'll see something about praise that we talked about last week and the week before. We'll see something important about praise. Even though we're moving on to coordination, really, we're just going to spend a, a, few, a few more minutes or a few, a few more tens of minutes. What? Coordination is a category? Is the fourth, right. What's the fifth? They correspond to the sfirot from, from chesed to hod. Right? They're called the five aspects of loving kindness that come out of consciousness. So each one goes into one of these spirot, each one goes into one of the emotions of the heart to add 
thought to it, or consciousness. Okay? So that it's not something that's just habitual. Even love, which is a very powerful force, if you don't add um, some consciousness to it, so it, it deteriorates very quickly. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. You just um, love criticism. Praise is a separate one. Praise is a third. And coordination, and what else? Coordination, and the last one is pr is is gratitude. Okay. So all of this, this is all called in um, this a way to maybe remember this. But if you don't remember it, it's also good. But it's it's a way of thinking about this whole thing. Is that the word mouth in Hebrew is equal to love and chesed together? Ava va chesed, pe, mouth, mouth, mouth. your mouth. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a um, sort of like a rule of thumb that that's what has to come out of my mouth. Love and loving kindness. Ava va chesed. Chesed is uh, 72, and Ava is 13, so together they're 85. Pe. So because of this, you would think that the most important thing is, we, we call this loving-kindness that informs all of the aspects of speech. That's the idea here. But um, it's not that loving, the words of love are the most important. It's dafka, the words of praise. And what's the idea here? There's a concept called the Akova Shel Padayat Avram, the Jacob who redeemed Abraham. What does that mean? So the sages say that when Avraham was in the in the furnace in Ur Kasdim, when Nimrod had threw him in, so why did Hashem save him? So one of the explanations given by the sages is based on this verse in Yechezkel, that it was the foreshadowing of, of Jacob's birth. That since Yaakov would be coming out of Avraham, so that was the reason that he was saved. So that's called the Yaakov Asher Padat Avram, Jacob who redeemed Abraham. Abraham is loving kindness, and Jacob is, is here in our case, it's praise, it's tiferet. So actually, there's a lot of praise, say it like this, that if the love between the couple has been diminished, and there's a lot of reasons for why that happened, and you can't rekindle love by itself. It's like a statement that it's very hard to rekindle love directly. Rather, you have to go a roundabout way. And the roundabout way is that it comes through praise. Words of praise. Everything that we've been talking about the last two weeks. And again, it sounds like well, this is empty, but it's not empty at all. Why? Because we said that for praise to be uh, candid for it to, to to hold any amount of veracity in it that it's true praise and it's not just empty praise it has to go through my mind that I, I really think about the good points in my spouse and if we're talking about making a list so that's a list that every person should make about their spouse it's, a, it's like an exercise that you should go through If you can't list ten things that are good about them, uh -oh. you know, that's the only thing, you know, the only good thing that I've seen about Father's Day and Mother's Day <laughs> is that people now have to list on Facebook um, at least one or two good things about their spouse. They have to according Which is not a bad thing in and of itself. I don't know if you need to publicize it. <laughs> but you know what? When you have to publicize it before everybody, Thanks. so it's almost like a Ferbrengen. <laughs> It's sort of like a, <laughs> for Brengen where you want to see what people's uh, reactions are. And the benefit is that you have to think about something that, first of all, your friends will... Like every for Brengen, the fact that when things are done publicly, you have to stand behind them. They can't be empty. Because people know you. 
And, um, and, and when you publicize it on Facebook, so I, I don't know if I'm advocating it or not, but I'm saying the benefit if, you've already, if people are already doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. So it has to be something that, that, you can, uh, that, that you'll get likes page? for. What? Is it on your Facebook page? What I love no. about my wife? No, I don't do that. <laughs> do you think that's going to take it out of it? You know, there's so much of it that people are going to start just throwing it out without thinking, and it's going to make it worse. So again, so that's the question. What, what, how, how, do, how is it uh, reacted to on Facebook? Whether people will let you get... Will people like it anyway, or will they like sort of... You know, people ignore on Facebook. They don't really do I don't like. There's no unlike. <laughs> but, uh, or don't like. There's an unlike, but no, after you've liked. There's no dislike, really. I don't think I don't think you right. That's what I'm saying. Right. So he's saying there has to be validity for you speak so publicly. People know you, like they they know whether this is something that. um, So it's not such it's not such a bad idea, but certainly the best idea is that you can do it for yourself. Then whether you can make that list, and make that list every time that you feel maybe that the love is gone, or the love isn't there as much as it was. Self love. Why self-love? Your love for your spouse. Oh, do it for yourself, you said. I Not for yourself. You're writing your spouse's pr- oh. uh, praises. It sounds like marriage. What's good about them? <laughs> mm-hmm. you, don't have to, you don't have to go to, uh, to a marriage council. You can do it yourself. And it's amazing that this thing works. The more you think about the good qualities in somebody, the more you have affection for them. It's a natural tendency in, in the heart that compassion... And by the way, it could also be uh, those things that are not praiseworthy, but for which you do have compassion. There is, um, uh, just before, I don't know why I've been doing this, but I've been watching Oprah's (laughs) series on faith. Different types of faith. It's a, I, she's an interesting character. I think she uh, she Deepak. developed, she matured well. Deepak Chopra. To, what? Deepak. Like Deepak Chopra? No, she's she's more into the people side of things. She's not into the philosophical side. So there was a couple that she was following. Um, the terrible story that just before they they were supposed to get married or they were engaged again already. I don't know. Um, he had a, a, a terrible car accident, and he he, he lost a lot of his uh, uh, of his uh, brain function. So he's like a, I don't know if to say that he's a child. It's not clear. But no, no, he's not a vegetable. He, he communicates, and but he's like like he, he finds it difficult to communicate. But he's in. so anyway. Why are they together? So to tell me that she continues to love. His qualities, maybe some of them are still there. But I think it's clear that she's there because of compassion. They got married and she's still with him for the last uh, seven or eight years already. So it's not something that's like passing and fleeting. But it's a tremendous decision. Why did she take it? I think she took it because wow. in the end, uh, we talked about this. What would have been, what the whole difference is, is two weeks, let's say, just before you got married and after you got married... If a person is, is, yeah. is clear about their commitment, um, so do it. And it could have happened two weeks after. And then mm-hmm. what would you have done? Mm-hmm. Would you have left then? And I think that the way to turn this into something that's not, um, that's not a, a, uh, a prison sentence is if you focus on the compassion that comes with it. So there's also compassion. Uh, I'll give you a, a, another example where, the, where this compassion comes about. Um, and and this, one's, this one's tricky because um, I know that especially... Um, well, I'll